which natural has been associated with a real number but we've created another number that's not on the list okay so we're shown that there is actually more numbers real numbers than there is than there is natural numbers okay uh, and in particular we've created a new number uh, that isn't that isn't part of this particular bijection okay so how do we create this new number okay but what we're going to do is we're going to take zero we're going to we're going to start off with zero so the new number the new number okay okay uh, is going to be okay well it's going to be well what we're going to do is we're going to take the first digit okay so it's going to be zero point okay and let's call this number okay uh, b11 okay b11 now what value is b11 going to have okay well we're going to say that b that b11 okay is going to be equal to a11 plus 1 okay if a11 okay is less than 9 okay otherwise we're going to say that b11 okay uh, is equal to or if it's less than 9 it means it has to be 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay Okay. If if a11 is any one of the digits from zero to eight, what we're going to do is we're just going to add an add a one onto it. Okay. Otherwise, a11 must be equal to nine. In which case, what we'll do is we'll take a one away from it. Okay. So we're going to take a one away from it. Okay. But the important thing that's actually happened here. Let me actually get rid of this here. Okay. The important thing that's actually happened here is that this new number that I'm creating. Okay. Uh, that has b11 in it. Okay. B11. Okay. As the first digit. Okay, is going to be different to the first real number, and the reason why it's going to be different to the first real number is because the first digit of this number, okay, is going to be different to the first digit of this first real number, simply because I've either added one onto it or I've subtracted one. Okay, now what about the second digit in this number? Okay, let's call this B two two. Okay, so B two two. Okay. Well, B22, we're going to look at the six. So this is the first, the, the B11 was based off this. B22 is going to be based off the second digit in the second real number, okay? And once again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to either add one onto it, onto this digit, to create this new digit, okay? I'll add one if the current digit is less than nine. Otherwise, I'll subtract one, okay? So now I know that the second digit in this number is different to the second digit in the second real number. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is look at the, the third real number okay, that we've listed, okay, and I'm going to take its third, its third digit, and I'm going to create a new digit called B33. Once again, this new digit that's going to come be that's going to be part of the construction of this new number is going to be A33, whatever number that is, plus one. That's if A33 is currently less than nine. Okay. Otherwise, it's going to be A33 minus one. So no matter what happens, okay, this number here, this digit, okay, that represents the third digit in this real number, is going to be different to this. It's either going to be one greater than it or one less than it. And I'm going to continue on, and my fourth digit, okay, the fourth digit is going to be based off the fourth digit of the fourth real number that we've listed. Okay, let's call that B44. Okay, okay, and this digit here, once again, is going to be different to this digit here. It's either going to be one more than it. Or one less than it and we can continue in this particular fashion okay because we've argued that we can list the real numbers okay because we're arguing that we're assuming that we can list them okay well then all of the real numbers have to occur somewhere in this particular listing okay and what we're trying to do here what Cantor's diagonalization argument attempts to do is to construct a new real number okay where that real number is different to every single number in this particular list. And the reason why it's different to every number in the list is, well, the reason why it's different to the first number in the list is because its first digit is either one more or one less than that digit. The reason why it's different to the second number in the list is because its second digit is different to the second digit, okay? It's either one more or one less than that digit. Okay. The reason why it's different to the third one is because its third digit is different to the third digit here, either one more or one less. And similarly, the reason why it's different to the fourth digit is because its digit okay, is one more or one less than this particular digit here, than the fourth digit in the fourth, in the fourth number in the list. And we continue on in this particular fashion, okay, defining 
BNN, okay? the digit for the nth number in the list. Okay, once again, it'll be it'll be one minus. Sorry, it'll be either one plus it or one minus it down to the nth number. Okay, and we continue on and on to infinity, constructing a new number in the list. That's different to all numbers that are listed here. In particular, the nth digit. The nth number in the list is different to this number in its nth digit. Okay, so what we've actually succeeded in doing here, using Cantor's diagonalization argument, and you can actually see that what we're doing here is we're constructing a new number, okay, based off this particular diagonal of numbers, okay, of digits, okay, where the new number that's being constructed, okay, is a number whose digits, okay, in these positions differ to the digits that are listed by either one more or one less. In other words, that this number is different to every single number on the list. And what we've actually shown here is this. If it was possible to list all the numbers, all the real numbers between zero and one, if that was possible to do, okay, and if we could systematically list them down, okay, Okay. Well, what we've actually just shown is this, is that actually there's no way to do this, okay, if we assume that we can do it, okay, we can always construct a new number, okay, that isn't part of this particular, of this particular listing. Uh, okay, guys, uh, once again, my name is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland, uh, and this, I suppose, Let's say lightweight argument in relation to showing that the real numbers, in particular the numbers between zero and the real numbers between zero and one, uh, that they're uncountable. Okay, showing that they're uncountable uh, was called Cantor's diagonalization argument. Okay, and once again, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland, and I hope that this video was in some way, in some way intuitive, uh, and more importantly helpful. Okay, thanks for watching.